Hey folks, and welcome to Croydon. Now, today's walk and talk is slightly different to usual because it's my annual revisit that I do in November each year to Croydon to see how it is. And the series is called Croydon, How It Is. We're gonna go along the high street into North End. From North End, we're gonna nip into the Whitgift Center and walk through there, come out on the Poplar Walk, West Croydon side, come back down North End and then finish up going along George Street. So that's the plan. So this is Coombe Cross traffic lights. Just observing leaders over there. There looks like a Art Deco style finish at the top, but we think it might have been a garage building once upon the time. And as usual with these guys, please comment. I know Croydon has a lot of followers around the world now. So people who've uh, lived here and worked here in the past. And it's a case of picking the best angle. Bearing in mind we've got some strong sun today, which is most welcome. And I find that with a lot of Croydon history, it's about looking up. Because we tend to, we tend to keep our heads down. We tend to look at our phones a bit nowadays. But actually, if you look at that on the top there, as a as the bus goes by, so King's Parade is the building directly opposite. And all that wonderful decorative finish, really quite a beautiful building. And then we've got the kind of mock Tudor style. Often see that above shops. But there've been so many changes of businesses in Croydon. So this is the actual high street. Galicia restaurant's been here a while. Looks like they've successfully ridden the pandemic, thankfully. Now, this is one of those that I remember well. High Street Radio, mainly a photography shop. There's a little photo of Reg, who I think died last year. And uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to see the reference to what went there before. It's a shame that when these businesses close down, that's generally it. I think there might be an online presence now. And this is just in one of the mock Tudor settings. We've got Leon House over there opposite Galicia. Leon House was built in brutalist style in 1970 as offices. And now it's uh, apartments, top to bottom, I believe. I think there's like a kind of penthouse area or something. Not actually been inside it, but yeah, so just that little section over there has got some history. And then uh, another look over there at the Galicia frontage. It's kind of evolving the whole time. A little look down there towards South Croydon. That's probably part of what we will do in the future South Croydon video. Got Providence Chapel there. Residentially we still obviously see lots of Victorian property. I say obviously because it's been pointed out many times in the past but quite a strong presence of Victorian housing. So just sweeping round where we've just been. Got the Crown and Pepper restaurant bar Shisha, known to many as the Catherine Wheel pub. I remember going in there and watching some live bands and the like. Now, just over here, well, there was a Tesco Express and some other shops in here. You could just kind of dive in, park the car, grab and go, and now board it up. Not quite sure why, but it could be that there's more apartments coming. I mean, there is a sign for penthouse suites here. So the actual site of Leon House, we think maybe near where the Grand Theatre was. There we go. Grand Theatre and Opera House, a Croydon heritage sign, 1896 to 1959. 
And as we'll see, we've got the site of the Davis Theatre just up the road. And that was covered in the 2022 video. And this is Rencoat House. Very beautiful building. Dates back to the early 1700s with connections to Christopher Wren. Because if I just pan the camera around now, we've got Christopher, Ye Christopher Wren Yard. But look at that incredible stonework there. And this is a listed building. I almost say obviously this is a listed building, but it's a, it's a little piece of treasure that Croydon has here. Merchant's house originally. Beautiful brickwork and nicely maintained. So yeah, that's uh, that's Rencoat. Quite something. This uh, theme of looking up will be repeated a lot today. Just intrigued as to what that decorative structure is at the top of that very nice building. Nicely decorated top, but it's got a kind of this wrap around. Answers in the comments, please, folks. I will be asking that a lot as we go through this little Croydon tour. Another nice symmetrical top to the building, bit of styling at the top. Nice brickwork. As I avoid walking into a post. And at the top there, above Chicken Valley and Stuart Edwards Full of Moon, we've got a 1930 sign. So obviously that shows that was built in 1930. But all like these get these blocks of buildings all have their own piece of symmetry to them. As the bus pulls away, you get a slightly better view. Relatively simple there above the, uh, the, the Buddhist centre and hidden gems, but just nice brickwork. Just picking out a little bit more of the older architecture that joins up to the uh, Sir Christopher Wren building and trying to avoid the sun, but also pointing out that we've got these new structures kind of immediately behind and around. Uh, the buses are going to be a feature today, folks. And we've got the Croydon fly over there. We think there was a snooker club down here. Well, I say that, we remember a snooker club somewhere down here. Got the boxing gym. This is just a uh, fly over up there and we're here. Yeah, it was just down there, I remember it. So we've only really done the first section. Well, we've not really fully done the first section. We're still in the high street, but already we've seen a real mixture of old and new. Plenty more to come. In front of the camera, we've got Crushed Bean and Robert Street. That's where the Davis Theatre was, which we touched in last year's video. And, and again, another view where we see these huge new buildings springing up, it seems, alongside the older ones. And again, the, the sun at this time of year can really highlight the beautiful brickwork. This is the Street of Marshall building. Lovely uh, detail and insignia on the top there. I'm just going to move back a bit to highlight some incredibly beautiful artwork on the side of the building here, the side of the Domino's building. Real talent has gone into putting that together. So this junction, all the buses that come up here to get into Croydon, they have to branch to the right. And then the cars have to go round to the left here. Of course, it was originally the case that you could go all the way up the high street and all the way through North End as well. That's been pedestrianised for a number of years. So a quick Davis House or Davis Theatre location revisited because I hadn't really noticed that 1928 before. Could just be the, the light as it is today's making that more obvious. But 18th of December 1928 it was opened and 
nice that we've still got that little commemorative date etched there for uh, for posterity. It's actually quite a nice view through the, the high street there because we're going to be coming up and seeing the old Grants building. We've got the corner there with what was Millet's. Now I remember Western music over here. I think I may have brought a guitar there once, but it looks like completely new buildings now. The ship has been there for many a year. Real pub in Croydon. And again, the architecture around it is impressive. The Bupa Dental Care building. Some really nice work there. And the Spread Eagle, which was in that West Croydon Catherine Street corner. And more very impressive artwork on the building on the side there. And just behind is what was St George's Walk. Uh, that's been completely flattened now. Uh, the other part of it near a Wellesley Road is still in place and they tend to use it for filming and things. So I'm not sure how many active businesses are in there. And yeah, so that's uh, Town Hall I'm trying to avoid the, the glare. I shouldn't complain about the, the nice weather, but it does sometimes create problems and just looking back on where we've just been. So yeah, the Spread Eagle, formerly NatWest Croydon Catherine Street corner. And the clock tower. And council offices. And then we've got Albion House. And more wonderful architecture. Yeah, yeah. And we're coming up to the frontage from what was Grant's department store. Cloaks Records was round about here. Shops and dining at St George's Walk, it says on the sign, but that's completely closed down. And we've got Dates of 1895 and 1897 on the old frontage there. And the arcade that goes down towards Surrey Street. I mean, that was one of the best things they ever did was to retain this and to make sure it was retained. We've got that, again, that link with the past. And those days sadly are long gone. People don't shop in that way now. It just doesn't happen. Now I think the underground club was just along here on the right. Very 70s style building above. And some more views of grants with the dressing gowns, corsets, jackets, baby linen, children's outfitting. Amazing. A real additional piece of treasure, if you like, following Raincoat House and some of the other bits and pieces we've seen in the middle of Croydon as the bell chimes. Eleven AMs here, so I picked a time when there'll be lots of bell interference. I always remember this, is it Ligne Rosé? Someone will correct me. But this, these adverts appeared in this sort of shop frontage or fake shop front for years. As I nearly get run over by a Just Eat delivery bike. Yeah, just one of those things that you remember when family trips to Croydon to shop, that's Park Street obviously and where, where Turtles was. 
and you get another view of the now flattened St George's Walk behind and more very impressive artwork. Try and get a better angle on that. Dan Kitchener. I didn't pick out who'd signed or who painted the others. Wow. Tokyo. Well, it looks like Tokyo. Post office still survives. And we are now really at the end of the high street because on the very corner here, a bank where yours truly once worked many moons ago, one of the few banks left, certainly in that west representation, but probably the same for the others. So this is one high street. And the almshouses on the corner of George Street mark where we enter North End. And I'm sure those of us who are a bit older can remember the cinema over there. And uh, North End is our next part of the journey. So we've got Crown Hill and the Minster, which I featured quite a lot last year. And that will join up with the future one. I keep mentioning these things, these videos will happen. Uh, there's a there's not a rigid timetable to what I do, but there is a kind of timetable. And Alder's stone being picked out nicely again by the sunny weather we have. Actually quite, looks quite nice looking down the north end here in this kind of weather with a reasonable amount of activity and leaves still on the trees changing colour. We've got the Alders sign at the top, still got the lights hanging down, but fenced off. I'm assuming that's for safety reasons. Some of this hasn't changed a lot. We've got Primark there and Central. I mean, there would have been changes inside. Businesses do come and go. There's a bit of prep going on for Christmas. I think they sometimes have one of these market setups here. Of course, Debenhams was located here as well, but that's long gone. That's just the next outlet now. It might get a bit noisy here because I think they have a situation where people can come along and either just be like a musician or play music or chant above WH Smith's hopefully you can hear me <laughs> some lovely detail there London. Right. So originally behind here, this is Burton's. Burton's up the top there. Behind here was the original Whitgift School. And there's some lovely old pictures in some of the Croydon books of the entrance here. So we've got the, well, it would have looked a bit different to that, but we've got this curved kind of entrance ways and then the school behind it. But that was pulled down and we've now got the Whitgift Shopping Centre, which I've not been in for a little while. It's the next part of the tour. So we've got Krispy Kreme, 
think I've got a voucher for a free one of these. Maybe later. Clarks has been here for a long time. But there's a lot of shutters down, guys. There, there are a lot of shutters down. I'm bad English then, but there are a lot of shutters down. So we've done the first bit. We've been up the high street and we've done a bit of North End. And we've now decided that go up the escalator and get a better view of Whitgift Centre November 2023 from the first level or the upper level. So there is honestly very little to see here. There are so many shutters down. And I thought, let's, yeah, let's do this view because it's uh, it hopefully capture a bit more. I'm going to head through here because I used to go and have my sandwich here of a lunchtime. And thankfully, it's still available for such things. English and Continental Cafe. There we go. We found a way to survive. Well done. Um, it was always quite quiet here. I think, yeah, the, there was a restaurant at the end there. Uh, Chinese or Malaysian, Singaporean, closed now. These shutters seem quite low, and I don't know why. I will have to mind my head. Empty, empty, empty. Chinese herbal medicine place. A perf the perfume shop, not a perfume shop. Beaver Brooks. You know, there are one or two businesses, one or two well-known names still here. But there's a lot of shutters down. And we know what that means. I'm not quite sure what's even going on over there. It suggests there's some sort of work going on behind those screens. I, I don't know. So the Nat West that was over there closed this year, or last year, a loose track. And then we've got some other protective thing happening here. Is it just being fenced off because it's dangerous, but there's nothing actually going on? It's really not clear. So that was the Woolworths. So we've got where the Carl factory is above and then down below, it was always there on the corner, always very popular. Superdrug's been there a little while. That uh, seems to be okay. But over here, <clears throat> well, you can see, I can make out the Lions Jewelers sign. Oh, here we go. Installing updates, like a update in your phone. Pardon our appearance while we carry out essential works. Boots, new look, Marks and Spencer remain open. 
Where is the capital letter? Yeah, so that was Lyons. I get a feeling of surprise and happiness when I see shops that I remember being here for a while that are still here. So Clinton's is one of those. Big floor space there. And the one on the corner that's been here for a long time, Holland and Barrett, and are still going. Just over there. And then we've got River Island through all the scaffolding and barriers. I'll be honest, I don't remember the Angel Beauty Parlour. Cafe in the corner here. And Boros. Remember Boros, folks? They have a sale on. So there's some kind of work vehicle over there. The escalators aren't working, they're out of action. The sushi bar is still operating. And more scaffolding over here. Sainsbury's, of course, is now closed. That was in the corner there. They closed this year. No Sainsbury's in the Wicker Centre. And below, well, we've just got a, Marks and Spencer's is still there, a new look. Some of the shops are still there, some are still operating, but uh, there don't appear to be many where there are kind of smaller businesses occupying the spaces here. I'm assuming it's rent rates and stuff. So there are either shops that in many cases we all remember, I'm sure, or many of us remember, or there are just empty shops, shutters, that's it. That's what we see in 2023 in the Wickliffe Centre Croydon. Yeah, there it is. Pretty sad, really. So down at ground level. I mean, there's really not much to see, but uh, we've got the exit, an exit to North End there with McDonald's on the left. That hasn't changed. That's where good old Sainsbury's was. And we still have boots. That seems to be doing okay. Huge store really, with the photo bit and the opticians and things. But as I mentioned earlier, take some pleasure that it's found a way to survive. I hope the numbers are good enough. Some of these big players go then, well, you could almost fit all of the retail space into one sort of section of the Whitgift Centre. Uh, there's a bit of light flickering, which I can't do too much about, I'm afraid. So we're going to head out onto the Poplar Walk exit. The wonderful St. Michael and All Angels with St. James Church, Croydon. Sandwiched. Bringing these new developments. We always used to park in this car park when we came on our family shopping trip. Because one of those silly things you remember is picking a lane and then coming down the slope to come out again at the end. Weird. Just one of those little memories. So we've just got the, uh, this is the Poplar Walk entrance exit to the Wicker Centre. 
and someone operating a pneumatic drill. It's surrounded by buildings and developments and noise. They've got this beautiful church set lovely against the skyline there. Uh, actually, looking at that shot sets it off really, doesn't it? Old and new. Moving out to Luna House over the other side. Probably built at a similar time to Leon House. And uh, heading round St Michael's Road towards the interchange. I've just got the rear of the church here. So we're going to head past here because I've got some well, there's some building work here that I highlighted in the first of these in 2020, first of this series. So we can see what it's become in that time. Because it's been very active. It really has. For all the retail decline, I nearly got taken out by that wing mirror on that bus. For all the retail decline, there's been a lot of housing activity. Croydon has the or has uh, stops on the Superloop service. Just got one there, not currently in service. And then there's the SL7 over in the distance. A way of getting to Heathrow Airport with fewer stops. So like an express service that just came in this year and a number of electric buses now. Just about put that on there, West Croydon to Heathrow, just on the side. Details are available online or travel apps to see if there's one near you. So yeah, this was West Croydon bus station. We've got Delta Point just over there. Almost feels like an older building now. And then we wrap round past some of the newer developments on the left. And then we've got some of the older properties on the right and West Croydon station just behind those sort of mesh arches ahead of us. West Croydon Rail Station behind there. And these uh, Retail premises have been here for some time, but again, change hands quite a lot. But the building straight ahead with the four arches. Now I featured that briefly in the first video that I did in this series, and it was, uh, it was in a bit of a state then, but it clearly has some protection on it because they've made good, done some restoration and Made a good job of it actually, and that's now going to feature in this new development that we see before us. Funny, if you just look at that at sort of street level, you just see the, the age of the church and the age of this particular structure. And it's only when you sort of go above, you get an idea of what's going on around it. So we're into the sun a bit here, but this is North End. So in terms of how the roads connect together, we started on High Street, we're in North End, and we've got London Road going along that way, obviously, to London. And then that heads down, the, over the left there, heads down towards Reeves Corner, that part of Croydon. So we'll, we'll pop over the road to avoid the harsh sun. We still have Marks and Spencers there. Christmas decorations are up. 
My man is still drilling the road up there. And we're going to head back down North End to the arms houses and then the final leg going up George Street. Remember the looking up guys, the architecture is there. That's more so over Ace than here, although that's still quite impressive above Marks and Spencers. More modern. And we'll see a bit more when we go further down. I'm glad Croydon found a way of retaining its history like that in some cases. Its past was impressive. For all your backpack and suitcase needs. Fewer shutters in the high street, but there is one over there. No Fend, I think means North End. And we've still got, we've got like the O2 shop here. Some wonderful architecture over there, up above. I nearly got run over by a mobility scooter there. Some jewellers and then some shutters. So we've got the Whitgift Centre entrance exit. That's the one with McDonald's, which I pointed out briefly when I was in the centre. It just goes up to the you know, Boots and River Island sort of area. Some scaffolding up there, but McDonald's been in that location for a long time. And we've got Central. Won't go in there today, there's a house of Fraser. Maybe I spoke too soon, there's a few empty places over there. Security signs and some activity in one or two of them. Fitting them out for future use. Walls of a power tool. Nice symmetry. Well, that was H&M that did open out onto the Wiki Centre. Quite nice above. Again, keep looking up. Drummond Road, another way of getting to Debenhams and the swap shop was down there. Maybe need to find a way of doing a or extending the South Croydon video to tick off all the things that I haven't already covered. And then you can potentially stay on my channel and see all of Croydon across different years. These pigeons are going for it here. We have entered George Street for the last leg. Arms houses here at the side. And you know what I'm going to say about the architecture. It still impresses if you just look up. <laughs> the old archway to what was the 
the George Inn coaching in or the remains of the archway. See my previous videos and YouTube short. Unfortunate fire there. I kind of think if this architecture was anywhere else, it would get a different respect, um, commentary, maybe. It's because of where it is, it sort of doesn't. Now, in some ways, I'd like to show you both sides at once. I didn't bring my 360 camera today. But I'm going to cross over here because the way the light's hitting that side is quite something. So we've got, a, just after the arms houses there, there's a nice bit of frontage with some decorative features at the top. I can't quite work out whether there's some damage up there, there may be. And then all the way down here, subject to some uh, fairly harsh shadows, but it's very impressive. So Jubilee Buildings, 1897 just above the George pub. Beautiful structure. And then there's an 1898 building just next to it. And some slightly more modern ones there, possibly into the 1920s, 1930s. So I'm at the middle George Street, Wellesley Road Junction. I'll pick out what's going on around here. Suffolk House over there. So Walls Fairfield Halls, very bright sunlight, apologies. Then we've got Wagamamas, etc. And then back down George Street, it's Walls of Minster, just there. And Popeye's Chicken. The clock's still showing 12 o'clock. Super Loop bus in action. One of the more recent closures of a large store was Waitrose over the road. Please no more. And one relic from the past is this uh, building straight ahead. What a grand structure. I know that a lot of big buildings had to be pulled down. There was a kind of secondary or original town hall and a church. They had to go. That one obviously stayed. And on this side of the road where it's we got the Croydon College building through there. These are all really new. But this also had a lot of old buildings and they had to go to allow for improvements and developments. Just above the, where the co-op bank is and Pret, Nero Nando's. Very 70s style, or 60s, 70s style finish. And that building always stands out. I think there's a Lloyds Bank there. Once upon a time. Another super loop. And then we come to... Final couple of things, really. Well, the... I've always called it a thruppity bit building. That's what the family always called it, my dad. Some people call it 50p or different types of cake. And we've got Box Park. 
often seen on TV when there's a big England football game on and goals are scored and beer goes flying. And we got East Croydon Station, which was developed quite a few years ago now. You saw the little slip road to go up there and drop people off on the old building, but that is what we have now. Talks of uh, doing some work there to bring in another platform or something. I probably got that wrong, but I think I read it somewhere. Answers in the comments. I see it's called One Croydon now. Light hitting it nicely. And then there's the kind of bus interchange there. So folks, that completes the uh, Croydon How It Is 2023 edition, where it's been a little bit different from before because I've provided some commentary and hopefully that's worked for you. But I really wanted to just present it how it is. Literally, that's the whole idea of this video. It's one year on. Uh, you can review it, you can draw your own conclusions. Uh, feel free to comment, I'd love to see that. Uh, if you don't subscribe to my channel, I'd appreciate that. A like and a subscribe would be brilliant. There's loads more videos on the channel. We've got different playlists. There's one for the whole of Croydon local history. Just leaves me to say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.